Welcome, dear viewers, to our format Natamedicine. Today I would like to talk about the vitamin K1 and K2. What are they for? What are they good for? And how far can they support our health? This is the topic that I will discuss with the chief physician, Dr. Petra Wiechel, from the Swiss Mountain Clinic. Stay tuned. So, dear Petra, here we go. K1 and K2. I keep hearing that the D3 should be associated with K2. This is a hype that has spread through the entire population. I've never heard of K1. So please explain to us what we need K1 and K2 for and where do we get it from? Well, first of all, you might have to say that the human organism, of course, has to rely on its basic nutrients in addition to the supply of vitamins. There are the so-called water-soluble and the fat-soluble. And the fat-soluble, as students, we had to learn, are called ADEK. Vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin E and vitamin K. And there are about 15 K vitamins. And today we're talking about K1 and K2. And both have something to do with blood clotting. Blood clotting is a very, very complex process. That means the body is capable of clotting when it has to clot. That means if you injure your finger now, you'll see that this wound will close very quickly if you just press hard or you take blood from the vein. This will happen very quickly on its own. On the other hand, of course, it must also be ensured that the blood does not clot in the body. And this is what these K-vitamins are responsible for, especially K1. It takes place in the liver. That's the provitamin and it's a cycle that takes place there, that is constantly being recycled in this vitamin K metabolism, that vitamin K is recycled from the active to the inactive. So it's a closed process within the blood clotting that is done by the liver. And what has an exclusive influence on this inner hepatic, i.e. liver process, is vitamin K1. And if I have a bleeding, for example, and the bleeding doesn't stop, then I give K1 drops and I can influence this clotting ability so quickly. So like everyone at home, if we cut ourselves somewhere, you could directly drop K1. You could. In the normal way, I would say, it is not necessary at all. Because the body actually knows best. But there are people who are under a high level of anticoagulation, for example. And then, of course, you have to worry about such additional things. And that's the question we'll answer later. How far can you go with an anticoagulation, if, for example, a heart valve is set, if a stent or a bypass is set at the beginning, or even heart rhythm disorders in the context of heart fluttering? These people are under a permanent anticoagulation. The layman imagines as if the blood was just flowing like water. And that's actually dangerous. If he, for example, gets injured, if a hemorrhoid would burst, then it wouldn't be possible to close it all at once. These are the hemophiliac, right? These are the hemophiliac that we also make into hemophiliacs. And that's why they say, for example, this K1 is found in green leafy vegetables, so broccoli and green vegetables, green cabbage, should not be eaten if you are under an anticoagulation. That's such a big absolute. So people who have too little K1 should not eat broccoli? No, those who are under these blood anticoagulation preparations, such as this curcumin preparation, that's the phalithrom or the marcoma. They influence these metabolism pathways, vitamin K1 metabolism pathways in the liver. And you would stop them. So this from the reduced K1 back to the oxidized and vice versa, you would now disrupt this process. 
that means they no longer have this high fluidity of the blood. And that's why they say, please, no green leafy vegetables, if they are under such an anticoagulation. If they have phallothrom and marcoma, these people come every month and let them measure their so-called quick or INR value, to see if the blood is in a good flow, to simply prevent thrombosis, embolism, to not provoke a stop in the circulation. But now we're talking about vitamin K2. And vitamin K2 also has an incredible influence on blood clotting also. That means that vitamin K2 also ensures that it comes to a flow in our body without any hindrance and that no thrombosis can develop at all. It does that too. But vitamin K2 has many other positive effects in the organism that vitamin K1 does not. And this vitamin K2, for example, is formed by ourselves in the intestine. That means we have a germ, that is the Bacillus subtilis. And Bacillus subtilis is a small microorganism, a bacterium that forms this K2. It also forms about 30 different antibiotic-like structures that attack this pathological microflora in our body. This Bacillus subtilis has over 200 different enzymes that regulate all inflammation in the intestine. This Bacillus subtilis becomes very strongly immune-attacking, anti-inflammatory. It can produce amino acids. So it's a small microorganism with an incredible effect. I use it, for example, not only in the K2 production, but also in the immune modulation to simply stabilize the power of the microorganism, in addition to others. And this Bacillus subtilis, for example, is also used as a bacterium for, for example, natto. That's a Japanese vegetable. It is vaccinated with this germ and then it forms a white spider's web tank around it. And with it, this fermented vegetable produces an incredible amount of K2 through this Bacillus subtilis. And the moment I eat this natto, which I don't find incredibly delicious, but which is very, very healthy, of course, I have a high amount of K2. And now you have to go back to the great effect of K2. So it's not just that it has a great influence on the digestion, but we need vitamin K2 in combination with vitamin D. Vitamin D is of course our most important hormone, our most important survival hormone. And vitamin D opens doors in the intestine so that we can absorb calcium at all. And calcium is one of the most important minerals that we need for our entire communication metabolism on the cellular level. But this calcium, it must not stay in the muscles. Then I get cramps. It must not stay in the cell either then the cell would break down. Calcium must be directed. It must not be connected to phospholipids in the cell membranes of the vessels. Then there is plaque. It must not calcify the foot either. And there is a hallux. That means it must now be directed to where it belongs. And that has to go into the bones. That means calcium stimulates the osteocalcin and now builds up the bones. And calcium prevents, or this K2 prevents, that it actually dissolves all structures in the vessels by a certain enzyme that activates it.
And that is why this K2 is always so significant in the combination with vitamin D. Because it does not only use vitamin D to provide a good supply of calcium in the body, but calcium must also be built into the teeth and into the bones. And it is responsible for that. And it has actually been a long time and a long year, it is not even that long ago, that we put the medical significance on K2. In the past, we did not even consider vitamin D important. Then we considered it important. And now we consider it important with K2. This is something that we are of course doing responsibly today. So you, a group of complementary biological doctors. That's nice. I always speak of us doctors. But on the other hand, we have been postulating for many years that if someone is anticoagulating, then no K1 or K2 substitution. And that has also been corrected in terms of studies for years. So now we have the view that under a very controlled medical therapy a patient with cardiac fibrillation, also a patient with a condition after bypass or artificial heart valve must be anticoagulated. But even this K2 alone with 50 micrograms can influence this so-called INR or quick value by one unit up or down. That means, if I only do an anticoagulation, I leave out what happens to calcium. I leave out the care for the vessels. I leave out such a calcification not to be prevented. And I leave out that the high effect of vitamin D does not protect bone health alone. And that's why today's trend is actually in the direction that we say people who are through these coumarin derivatives that they still get vitamin D with K2. And in any case is this under very tight control at the beginning until it works out well. And then the new quick or the new INR value has to be corrected to a measure that takes into account that this patient also takes an additional K2. He certainly needs less of the other. And that's actually what I want to tell everyone today. It really requires good medical support, but don't underestimate the great effect and important effect of K2 for bone health. May I summarize something else? K1 is actually there to thicken if necessary. And K2 makes sure that the blood flows nicely throughout the body and no thrombosis develops. Does that mean that if someone still develops a thrombosis, that he then has too little K2? Yes, a thrombosis itself does not only occur due to a poor ability to coagulate, but the thrombosis often occurs due to inflammation on the cell walls. If an inflammation occurs on the cell wall, the thrombocytes, the blood platelets, the inflammation will quickly be able to repair this defect of the cell wall. And that, of course, creates a narrowing. Not only a narrowing, but a narrowing automatically occurs. That is, that is how a thrombosis is discussed today. Or if this thrombosis dissolves and stays somewhere, then it is an embolism. So that's life-threatening, such a lung embolism. But this coagulation system, which of course is not only K1 and K2, but also the eight coagulation factors from many, there is this genetic defect with which you already come into the world, a blood deficiency, I think that's factor eight. That means this coagulation system is a really highly complicated metabolism and I can of course indirectly influence it through these coumarins and thereby indirectly influence the K1 metabolism.
The other thing that amazed me so much, it has a bacillus, as you already said, in the intestine. And these are small chemical factories. They eat something and excrete it into a substance that the body desperately needs. It's an incredible story what they're doing in us. Yes, and above all, the more we know about all this, that's maybe a millionth of what we know today. We know about Bacillus cereus, Subtilis firmus. There is so little knowledge in medicine. The stronger we have a healthy microflora everywhere, and your microbiome here is different than in your brain. Your microbiome in the lung is different than in your intestine. These are all processes that in there. This sounds a bit dramatic for some but a leukocyte is also a microorganism, because it does something, it phagocytates. A blood platelet gets the information to go to this left index finger or right one and to initiate a coagulation. This is a micro world. So we both are two huge bacteria piles, you with the individuality, Alexander, and I, Petra. But this is a very exciting field, and it is really a Stone Age medicine that we are doing today. And this anti-medicine that we are doing is aimed against us. And we should, I think, as Dietrich Klinger says so beautifully, learn to understand an immune symbiosis. Then we deal with this micro-world a little more gently, more modestly and respectfully. And we don't destroy it. I just read that a healthy sole of the foot has 50 different bacteria. And if that doesn't work out, it can give you a foot fungus or whatever. But what are we trying to do? We are trying to get rid of these bacteria. We wash our hands every day and destroy a very valuable microbiome here. With this Stone Age knowledge from medicine, where everything is always made bad, everything is then treated as bacteria or individually, but not as a whole organism. Well, it's changing, because there is now a microbiome in medicine. It didn't exist before, did it? So again, the D3 level, it is always important to set this value correctly in cooperation with the doctor, right? Not just D3 but also the INR or the quick value for a person who needs anticoagulation therapy. And he has to be well prepared, also in knowing that he is taking a vitamin D plus K2 preparation. That's a special precaution again. Actually, only at the beginning. Afterwards you can classify that quite well. It is very, very certain. Not everyone practices like that. But I just wanted to tell you that, because the good effect of K2 is so incredibly important, also for our vessel health and for our bones and teeth and hair and connective tissue health. Okay, so it doesn't hurt if you take a D3 preparation with K2 together, instead of just a D3, right? Well, I have to be honest, this always vitamin D and K2 together is great but it has to be more careful, because it has to be adjusted to the dose. And it is very important that you are fair to three components. First, the quick and INR value for anticoagulation, then also a sufficient vitamin D value. And if you've always coupled that to K2, then you don't have much leeway you may need much less than in the standard preparation. That's why I would do it individually. In that case, I would do it individually. Very important, it just has to be properly adjusted by the doctor. That has to be properly adjusted, because then it's not a problem. And then it's really a very good basic therapy. I would like to make a loop, a clip. We still have time, because I just heard from you how valuable calcium is, that it should be in the bones. And this is exactly where we hear again and again the consequences of osteoporosis, which ultimately gives back this bone density that calcium no longer gets in there. Was that exactly the explanation? Yes, I think it's not just the explanation. Osteoporosis is a very, very big topic. 
We've already discussed that in a program. It is sometimes the presence of calcium that is not there. So if I take too little vitamin D, for example, or don't take it at all, I sometimes see values that are terribly low, then calcium cannot be absorbed at all. Calcium is needed every day, and calcium is not an opti-opti optimum, but in a good basic optimum, calcium must be added every day. And if that's not present, because it's a valuable buffer mineral, for example, for the buffering of the blood pH value, the body will not discuss with you that the blood pH value is juggling up or down, but it has to keep it stable. Otherwise, everything that happens in the blood cannot take place in a form. And for this, calcium is often needed for buffering. And if this calcium is not present, then the body has to serve the blood and withdraws the calcium immediately, whether it's from the teeth, the hair or the bone. So a decalcification of the bone, two hands are not enough for causes. And there is only the intake of calcium and then inorganic in the brow's tablets. This creates phospholipid deposits in my vessels. But if this is not juggled, if it is not stimulated by the osteocalcin, where it belongs, but somewhere to calcification in our body, then it is actually misguided. Or the whole question of sport. So jumping rope, jumping, running, giving a little pressure for the bones, means that the osteoblasts stimulate the bone-building cells. They want to feel challenged. They don't want to activate a huge metabolism if you're always sitting at your desk or on your computer. They don't feel important and don't encourage you to give energy and strength there. Especially since they lack vitamin D in the absence of sunlight. And so there is no substitution or possibility of what the bone needs. So osteoporosis is a big topic. Good. Thank you very much, dear Petra. At this point I would like to refer you to the show on the QS24 YouTube channel. Just type in, Osteoporosis Petra Wick Hell, and you will be immediately sent to the show we were allowed to do. I just opened something, we are not able to solve so quickly. I hope you enjoyed the show about vitamin K1 and K2. It has shown you a lot of valuable things. Especially in connection with vitamin D3. So please do this adjustment with your doctor. Don't just supplement vitamin D3 with K2. We have heard that it is not so easy to find the right values and adjust them. In this sense, all the best. See you next time. And again, take care of each other.